Okay, so in this video, we are continuing with volumetric analysis. And as stated, we will be specifically now looking at the procedure of titration. So titration is a procedure carried out to determine the concentration of a solution whose concentration is unknown. So basically, it will not be a standard solution. Because remember, we said a standard solution is a solution whose concentration is known. So if you don't know the concentration of a solution, one way of finding it out is to do a titration. Now, there are different types of titration. We have acid-base, redox, buck titration, and others. But for this one, we are focusing on acid-base titration. All right? So the typical setup for a titration is that you will have this apparatus, which is the burette. Here we have our clamp stand. So the burette will go into the clamp stand. The burette, it reads from 0 to 50. So it can hold a maximum of 50 cm cube of solution. And this is our conical flask. We have our of our tile here. The reason why we are doing it is in this titration we will be looking for, in a titration we will be looking for a color change and you want to see it as quickly as possible so the, tile, so the white tile will show it off quickly. We have the pipette which will be used to de deliver our analyte. So the analyte, so we have two substances. We have our standard solution which we typically place in our burette and the analyte, which is the substance of unknown concentration. We will use our pipette to measure it and place it in our conical flask. So for, so for the titration, our analyte, substance of unknown concentration, will go in our conical flask. The standard solution to place it in the burette. And then what we will do now, we add an indicator to the analyte in the conical flask. Now, when you're doing a titration, we are looking for a color change. What does the color change signify? It signifies when, if it's an acid-based titration, when the acid has neutralized the base. What does that mean? Right? So we have a point in our titration called the equivalence point when the number of moles of each solution are equal. But remember when we were doing moles also, we looked at mole ratio. So when we say the moles are equal, it's not like a one-to-one -one ratio. Like say if five moles of A react, it also have five moles of B. When we say they are equal, it's in terms of a ratio. And I will explain that further on. So for the titration setup, you have your standard solution and your analyte. Standard solution in the burette, analyte in the conical flask. This part of it is just a theory, so I will do an actual titration in the next video. So we say the purpose of doing a titration is to determine the concentration of a solution whose concentration is unknown. There are two points in a titration, two important points. We have the equivalence point, as I just explained, is when the two substances are equal in terms of moles, not volume or anything else. And then the end point. When you are doing the titration, remember your acid is colorless, your base is colorless. So how will you know when they have neutralized each other? How will you know when both of them are equal? Because that is where you have to stop the titration. Once they become equal, you stop it. But if the two of them are colorless solutions, you will need an indication, a pointer, to say that they have neutralized each other. That is where the end point comes in. So the equivalence point is where both of the solutions are now equal. But to visualize it, we add a substance called the indicator. And when the indicator changes color, it tells me that both of the solutions are equal. 
Now, your indicator will not change, does not necessarily change color at the equivalence point. So, when you're doing a titration, you have to choose indicators carefully because we have different types of indicators, right? So, you want your indicator, the end point of your indicator, to be as close to the equivalence point as possible because the end point is telling you that you have reached the equivalence point. So if the end point is far from the equivalence point, then that is not a good indicator to use because the titration would have finished too early. So we choose indicators with end points that are very close to the equivalence point. So when we're doing a titration, the indicator tells us when to stop. It tells us that we have reached our equivalence point. And our equivalence point is telling us that both substances are present in equal numbers in terms of moles. So when we do a titration, right, let's say we had filled the burette. So as I said, the burette can hold a maximum of 50. So let's do work out a scenario here. And the scenario is, let's say you are provided with a solution of sulfuric acid. So you have a solution of sulfuric acid and its concentration is unknown. You do not know the concentration of sulfuric acid and you are asked to determine the concentration of sulfuric acid. So the first thing we need, we, we need a standard solution. Remember, a standard solution is one whose concentration is known. Remember, we are looking at acid-base titration. So it is an acid-base reaction. So you are provided with a solution of sulfuric acid and you are asked to find the concentration of it. So we are going to use the titration technique. So what I'm going to do is reduce a base. Let's say it's sodium carbonate. I will need to know the concentration of the sodium carbonate solution I am using. So let's say I prepared a standard solution of sodium carbonate. And that concentration, let's say it is 0 0.15 moles per bm cube. So this is my standard solution. So I make a standard solution of sodium carbonate. 0 0.15 moles per bm cube. This is my analyte. Right? The substance undergoing analysis. So we have our standard solution and our analyte. How are we going to do the titration? Our analyte, sorry, our standard solution is going in our burette. So let's say we fill the burette. So how the burette sets up? So I'm going to do it here. At the top of the burette, you have zero, and at the base, it's 50. Good? So it runs from zero to 50. So let's say we carry it up to 1. So you fill the word to the mark that says 1. Right? The sulfuric acid on our analyte, remember we said we are going to use our pipette and place the analyte in our conical flask. So this pipette. The pipette is very accurate and it, has a, it delivers a specific volume. It's not like the burette that has numbers from 0 to 50. It just has one number and a mark on it. So this is a 25 mil pipette. It will only, de it will only deliver 25 mils of any solution. So we we'll use our burette to pipette Sorry, we will use our pipette to deliver 25 cm cube of sulfuric acid into our conical flask. We would add our indicator 
and place it under our burette. So inside the burette, we would have our analyte, which is sodium carbonate. Inside the conical flask, it is our analyte sulfuric acid. And we would add our indicator. So for example, we add phenolphthalein, and that indicator, in the base, it would be pink. So when you add the acid, it will change from pink to colorless. Now, once you start add now, so once you add your analyte on the indicator, you will turn the knob on the burette to run this solution out. So let's say, remember, once you start adding the solution from the burette to the conical flask, you are going to look for a color change. Once you get that color change, you will stop. So remember now, the burette, let's say, we had filled it up to where you have the one CMQ mark. When we started running it, and we turn this now, we turn the knob, and we start running the acid, we start running the sodium carbonate into the acid. We get a color change, we turn the knob to stop the titration, and then we go back to the burette and read off where the solution has reached. So we filled it up to one, and then we start running it into the conical flask. The point at which we get a color change, we stop the titration and look at where the solution has reached. So for the volume of the standard solution, so when we do titration, after the titration has completed, we draw a table. So all we did was place the sulfuric acid in the conical flask, the sodium carbonate in the burette, we add our indicator. Then we run the sodium carbonate into the sulfuric acid. Once we get a color change, we stop, and that is it. Then we're going to make a table. So here we go, we have one column for the buried readings and then we can conduct the titration more than, more than once. So when you just start the titration, meaning when you fill the buried with the sodium carbonate, you will take a note of where it has reached. So earlier I said we placed it at the one CMQ mark. So the initial reading is one CMQ. Let's say when the titration was finished, when we get the color change, the reading and the period, it was 22 CMQ. So at the, at the start of the titration, the initial reading was one CMQ because the period, the, at the top it starts at zero and down here is the 50. So we filled it up, it was one. When we got the color changed and stopped it, it was at 22. So the volume we used would be the final, would be the final volume 
minus the initial. So 22 will take away 1, will give you 21. So the volume used there would be 21. Now to ensure for accuracy, for accuracy, we will do the titration at least two more times. So let's say we do it a second time, right? Now remember the burek, it was a maximum of 50. And you have used 21 cm cube. That means if you are doing your titration accurately, it should take the second trial should also use 21 cm cube. So you don't have to fill the burette at this point. The first titration, the sulfuric acid present, it took 21 cm cube. So in your second titration now, you would remove your conical flask with the sulfuric acid, get a new one, right? Then you get a new conical flask, prepare 25 cm cube of acid again and add your indicator. But you do not need to fill up the burette again. The reason being, the burette contains 50 cm cube. You have only used 21 cm cube of it. That means you still have 29. So where you have finished the first titration, which is 22, which is the final reading on it was 22. So your initial reading will be 22. So let's say on your second run it stopped at 44 times 32. It stopped at 44 point 32. That would have been the value used now would be again final minus the initial. So that now would have been 22 point 32. For titration, it must be accurate. You want these volume to be extremely close. Now, for titration purposes, 21 and 22 are very far apart. It is not accurate. If it was accurate, let's say you have 21.0, it would be 21.05, 21.04. That is considered accurate. So 22, even though in normal terms, 22 and 21 are close, for titration, 21 and 22 is not close. So let's say do a third titration now. This time, you will fill it up again. You will have to fill up your brew rate because your brew rate holds a maximum of 50, and at the moment, you have used up 44 of it. But remember, the volume used for two titrations now was 21 and 22. So to be safe, you will want to make sure that your burek have been at least 25 cm cube. So you can fill up your burek to the 25 cm cube mark. Let's say this time, Mm -hmm. Let's say this time, when we get the color change, the reading on the red is 47.33. So we have conducted three titrations. The first one, we filled the burret to the one cm cube mark. We started the titration when we got the color change and we stopped it and we looked at how much we ran out of the burret and it was 22. So to get the actual volume 
of the sodium carbonate solution used a subtract the final reading from the initial 22 minus 1 is 21. So seeing that we only used 21 cm cube, we just continued the titration from where we left off. So the buret, the reading on the buret was 22. That is where we are starting the second titration. So we are picking up the second titration exactly where the first one was finished. So the initial reading for the second titration is 22 because we are starting exactly where the first titration was completed. For this one, when we got the color change, we say, for example, the reading was 44.32. When we do the subtraction, the reading was 22.32. But for titration, these two numbers, so the first titration, 21 cm cube of sodium carbonate was used. In the second titration, 22.32 cm cube of sodium carbonate was used. If it is the same solution of sulfuric acid, why are they taking different volumes? It means you are not doing the titration properly or accurately. And so you do it a third time, and when you the volume used here is 22.32. So these two numbers are extremely close. So these two are accurate. So when we are going to do our calculation, you will not use the 21. You will use your two closest numbers. So 22.32 and 22.33. Now for most institutional chemistry classes, the figure, when you are doing the volume used from one titration to the next, the difference should not be greater than 0 0.1. At least for CX, for CSEC and K, it should not differ. The volume used from one titration to the next should not differ by more than 0 0.1. So if you look, this, if I subtract these two, the difference would be 1.32, that is more than the 0 0.1. But this one would be less than the 0 0.1. So when you're going to do a titration, you use the two closest numbers, these two. So you would ignore this. However, if all three numbers are close, so if this was 22.1, let's say two nine, you would have used all three of them. But because this one is a little far off, we will only use these two. So once you have carried out your titration, the procedure, you will, you will record the data in a table like this. Once you have done this now, there is a series of calculations that will be performed. The first one we are going to do is to work out the volume of sodium hydroxide that was used. So this is the this table is for the volume of sodium hydroxide. Volume of sodium carbonate, that is. So this is the volume of sodium carbonate used in the titration. So the first calculation we're going to do is that of finding the average. So remember, we are using the two closest ones since this one is off. So the first calculation is the average volume of sodium carbonate. And that would be 22.32. Three, 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 three
second calculation you are going to do is to calculate the mole of your standard solution. So remember, from the first video with standard solutions, if you have concentration and volume, you can always find the number of moles. So you have the concentration of sodium carbonate, and you know the volume that was used in the titration. So therefore, you can find the number of moles of sodium carbonate. So in the second calculation, we're going to work out the number of moles of sodium carbonate. molar concentration times volume. I remember now, once you are doing concentration, the volume must be in BMQ. So the molar concentration is 0 0.15 moles per BMQ. And the volume, if you divide the 22 and treat three by 1,000, It will get 0 0.02233 in the BMQ. So our volume in BMQ is 0 0.02233. BMQ cancel BMQ, we are left with moles. So it's 0 0.15 times 0 0.02233. That's 3.35 using standard form 3.35 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Number 3. So remember now, what we are doing is trying to find the concentration of sulfuric acid, the molar concentration. We know that molar concentration is mole over volume. We already know the volume of sulfuric acid. All we need is the mole. So just like in the third, in the part three of the moles video, once a reaction occurs between two substances, you will need a balance equation to find the moles. So what we are doing is finding the moles of sodium carbonate because we were given the concentration and the volume. So we use these two to find the moles of sodium carbonate. Now once we have the moles of sodium carbonate, we can write a balance equation and use mole ratio to get the moles of sulfuric acid. So we have the moles of sodium carbonate so we need to write a balanced equation. So it is sodium carbonate solution reacting with sulfuric acid. We are going to get, remember when, a, when, car, when metal carbonate, scrapping acid, we get salt, carbon dioxide, and water. The salt is the negative ion of the acid and the positive ion of the base. So it is sodium sulfate. Remember the charge on sodium is Na plus. Remember your charge on sodium is Na plus. The charge on sulfate is SO42 minus. So bring the tool here. This is a one. So your formula is Na2SO4. So we will get sodium sulfate, carbon dioxide, and water. Let us balance our equation. We have two atoms of sodium on the reactant side, two atoms of sodium on the product side. One atom of sulfur, 
one atom of sulfur, one carbon on, on both sides of the arrow, hydrogen, we have two hydrogen in sulfuric acid, two hydrogen in water. We have four oxygen here, plus three here, that's a total of seven. We have four oxygen here, and two, at six, and one is seven. So the equation is balanced. The reason why we need the equation is to get the mole ratio. So from the mole ratio, which two substances are we interested in? Sodium carbonate and sulfuric acid. So what is the ratio between sodium carbonate and sulfuric acid? It is the one to one mole ratio. Remember, when you're looking for moles from the equation, it is the number in front of each substance. If you don't see a number, it means that there is a one here. But we don't need to write a one only if it's two or more. So if you don't see any number, it's a one. So the mole ratio between sodium carbonate and sulfuric acid is one to one. If you don't remember how to use the mole ratio, revisit the mole concept videos, specifically part three. It explains mole ratio and how to use it. Whether it's one to one, two to five, two to three. So the mole ratio is one to one. Once it's a one to one mole ratio, it means that whatever amount of moles of sodium carbonate reacted, the same amount of moles of sulfuric acid also reacted. So if the mole ratio is one to one, therefore the mole of, let's put this in our fourth step. So the third step is to write our equation the fourth step is to write your mole ratio and use it to find the mole of the sulfuric acid. So therefore the mole of sulfuric acid is equal to 3.35 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Now you have the moles of sulfuric acid and you have the volume. Therefore you can easily go ahead and find molar concentration, which is equal to mole over volume. So the mole is 3.35 times 10 to the minus 3. And the volume is 25 cm cube, but in dm cube it will be 0 0.025 dm cube. Zero point one three four, zero point one three four moles per dm cube for the answer. All right. Now the question: most questions for titration will stop here, but we can go a little further and ask you to calculate the must concentration. Now, if you are doing a titration and they ask you for mass concentration, there is two ways of working it out. Once you find the molar concentration, if you want to find the mass concentration, so step six, there are two ways. So mass concentration this one is only for your acid-base titration. So you would have already figured out what the molar concentration is. So the mass concentration is the molar concentration times the molar mass. So the molar concentration is 0 0.134. Moles per dm cube. And it's sulfuric acid, H2SO4, two 
atom of hydrogen times one plus one atom of sulfur, that's 32, four atoms of oxygen, that's four times 16, so that's two plus 32 plus 64, that's 98. I'm not that quick, I just know it's 98. So, sulfuric so acid is 98 grams per mole. And that's 13.13. So it's 13.13 grams per dm cube. Remember no more will cancel. Move. So I left with grams per dm cube, which is the unit for mass concentration. So if you have the molar concentration and you want to find mass concentration, simply just multiply the molar concentration by the molar mass. But from the first part of volumetric analysis, I told you that mass concentration is mass over volume. Right? So if you want to use this one, you are going to have to convert the molar sulfuric acid to mass. Remember, we don't have the mass of sulfuric acid, only the mole of sulfuric acid. So, mass is equal to mole times molar mass. And the mole of, of sulfuric acid is 3.35 times 10 to the minus 3. sulfuric acid used in the titration was 25 cm cube. Convert that to dm cube, it is 0 0.025 dm cube. So let's see if these two answers will be the same. So 0 0.328 divided by 0 0.025. And we get 13. Questions on my Instagram page. You can check it. There are questions on it. I post questions and answers. And so there are questions and answers on it. About C second, K, you can just check it. Alright, that's it for this video.